Hey folks, let's keep rolling. Which of the following conditions will be associated with the highest levels of ACTH and cortisol? So they want you to identify both high levels of ACTH and cortisol. Choice A, Cushing's disease. What is Cushing's disease? When Cushing's syndrome occurs because of a pituitary adenoma, a corticotrope adenoma of the pituitary is the cause of Cushing's disease, right? So, in if the pituitary is the reason, then yes, it will secrete more ACTH that will stimulate the normal adrenal to produce more cortisol. Let us look at the other choices. ATM sample, blood sample after midnight administration of dexamethasone. See, we, what will happen with midnight administration of dexamethasone is that it will suppress cortisol and ACTH production. So, you will have low levels of both ACTH and endogenous cortisol. What will happen with bilateral adrenal adenoma? Now, this is producing a lot of cortisol and adrenal adenoma is producing a lot of cortisol, but it is causing feedback negative suppression of the normally functioning pituitary, right? Addison's disease is the opposite of an adrenal adenoma. Here, the adrenal is not producing enough cortisol. Therefore, there are the low levels of cortisol and high levels of, consequently, the pituitary will produce high levels of ACTH because that feedback negative suppression will be lost. So, the answer to this question should be choice A, right? That is your answer. If one of these choices was ectopic ACTH production. That is what produces the highest levels of ACTH and cortisol, even 8 times more than pituitary adenomas. Okay. Let us quickly discuss Cushing syndrome. Although it is a rare disease, but you get questions in your exam. Chronic exposure to glucocorticoid of any etiology is referred to as Cushing's syndrome. The Syndrome can be ACTH dependent, which is when the disease is either in the pituitary or there is another tumor which is producing ACTH. Then it is called ectopic ACTH production, right? It could be ACTH independent when the adrenal is the site of the disease, right? So, these patients would have when the adrenal is the site of the disease, these patients would have low ACTH levels, these patients would have normal or high ACTH levels. I just told you with the question that we discussed that these patients have very high levels of ACTH production. Itrogenic steroid, glucocorticoid use for another medical illness like SLD, that is the most common cause of Cushing syndrome. Okay. But endogenous hypercortisolism, right? This is exogenous. Steroid or glucocorticoid is being administered exogenously. Endogenous hypercortisolism, the most common cause is Cushing's disease, pituitary adenoma. Okay. And the most common cause of ectopic ACTH production, which tumor are lung carcinoids, right? Moving on. On a very basic level, at a biochemical level, what does excess cortisol do? It causes more gluconeogenesis, it causes a lot of lipolysis and it causes protein catabolism. Further, at a biochemical level, it overcomes this enzyme. What is the importance of this enzyme? In the normal individual, right, even in patients with Cushing's, cortisol and aldosterone have the same affinity for the mineralocorticoid receptor. Both will produce same effects on the mineralocorticoid receptor. Then why does cortisol not have those effects in the normal individual? Right? It is because of this enzyme which is present in the kidney. And what it does is, it deactivates cortisol to cortisone, fine. But when patients have a Cushing's, that is excessive cortisol production, 
the catalytic capacity of this enzyme is exceeded, is overcome and therefore mineralocorticoid effects start to appear because of the excess cortisol. And those mineralocorticoid effects are diastolic hypertension, hypokalemia and edema, right. These patients also have obesity which is central, they have type 2 diabetes, remember gluconeogenesis, type 2 diabetes, impaired glucose tolerance, tolerance, hirsutism, depression and osteoporosis. Excess cortisol also suppresses gonadotropin production and that therefore causes hypogonadism and in the females it causes amenorrhea. Now so far the features that we have discussed are non-specific, they can occur even in someone who does not have Cushing's, right? Obesity, type 2 diabetes, hirsutism, depression, osteoporosis, hypogonadism, amenorrhea, none of those is specific to Cushing's. Features like skin fragility, features like broad stri with a diameter of more than 1 centimeter, features like fat redistribution, moon faces, a buffalo hump, and central obesity. These are features which are more specific for Cushing syndrome. Besides this, they have a severe proximal myopathy. They can't get up from a chair without using their hands. Cushing's is a hypercoagulable state, so they can develop deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. In fact, the most common cause of death in Cushing's is cardiovascular disease, MCQ, right? Because of their lymphopenia, despite the leukocytosis, they have lymphopenia and because of this, there is an increased risk of infections in patients with Cushing syndrome, right? Now, these features are the same across all etiologies of Cushing's, but I told you, I have said this twice now that patients with ectopic production of ACTH from tumours other than the pituitary have a very high ACTH production. So that high ACTH will have, will produce a little different side effect, clinical features. There will be much more pigmentation. The ACTH itself directly acts on melanocytes and causes much more pronounced pigmentation, especially of skin creases. The disorder will have very quick onset and be rapidly progressive. There will be, the myopathy will be much more severe. Because of the excessive cortisol, the mineralocorticoid features will also be very pronounced. The hypertension, the hypokalemic alkalosis and the edema, the mineralocorticoid features will also be very pronounced as will be the impaired glucose tolerance. So, these features more prominent, they are seen in every Cushing's patient but they are more prominent in ectopic ACTH producing tumours. When you see someone with these features, right, central obesity, proximal weakness, obesity, you know, uh, facial plethora, stri, right, how do you evaluate them, right? The first thing that you will do is you will screen them. The best screening test is UFC is urinary free cortisol, right? That is the best screening test. You do a 24 hour urine collection and you do this test thrice. That further improves the sensitivity. If it is Cushing syndrome, the cortisol level, free cortisol level excretion will be high. A dexamethasone overnight test you give a 1 milligram dexamethasone dose at 11 p.m. and then at 8 a.m. in the morning, you check the cortisol levels. You will be unable to suppress it below 50 nanomole per liter, right? A midnight plasma cortisol, what happens with Cushing syndrome? There is a diurnal variation of cortisol production, right, in the normal individual. Peak cortisol is produced in the morning at uh, 7 a.m. and the lowest physiologic production of cortisol occurs in midnight. So you do midnight plasma cortisol and you will see 
that typically it will be more than 130 nanomole per liter, right? And that establishes the loss of diurnal variation. A low dose dexamethasone is 0.5 milligram every 6 hours for 2 days. Again, you will not be able to suppress cortisol below 50 nanomole per liter. So, those are the initial tests that establish cortisol excess, right? The screening test was 24 hour urinary free cortisol, ideally done thrice. So, once you, so if these are negative, there is no Cushing's, you stop further investigation. If these are positive, you have established Cushing syndrome. Now, you need to know where this excess cortisol, why this excess cortisol is being produced. Is it ACTH dependent or ACTH independent? So, you check ACTH levels. If ACTH is low, suppressed ACTH, then the disease is in the adrenal and this is when you do an unenhanced CT of the adrenal region. An unenhanced CT can also differentiate between benign and malignant adrenal tumors. ACA is adrenocortical adenoma, ACC is adrenocortical carcinoma, okay. On the other hand, if ACTH is normal or high, that means it is disorder now is ACTH dependent. So, it, it is either a pituitary tumor which is the commonest cause or there is an ectopic production. So, then the gold standard investigation for a pituitary microadenoma is an MRI. You do an MRI, right? And you can do a CRH test. CRH is corticotropin releasing hormone. So, you can do a CRH test, a CRH stimulation test, see with pituitary tumors the difference when the ACTH is normal or high, you are still left with the possibility of either a pituitary tumor or an ectopic source of ACTH, one of the two, correct. Now, what is the difference between these two is that this produces very high level of ACTH, this does not produce so much. So, pituitary tumors still demonstrate regulatory properties. That is, when you give them CRH, their ACTH production will increase, the cortisol production from the adrenal will increase. When you do a high dose dexamethasone suppression test, 2 milligram every 6 hours, here it was low dose, 0 0.5 milligram every 6 hours. High dose dex is 2 milligram every 6 hours for 2 days. So, pituitary tumors will respond to these tests ectopic production of ACTH will not respond to these tests. So, that is one way you can distinguish between the two. Now, when do you do, you have heard probably of IPSS. What is IPSS? IPSS is inferior petrosal sinus sampling. See, there the MRI has a limitation. The MRI cannot detect microadenomas below 2 millimeter. The MRI cannot detect a microadenoma below 2 millimeter. So, how do you establish that the hormone is coming from a pituitary microadenoma, right? Then you do a IPSS, you cannulate the inferior, both bilateral inferior petrosal sinuses are cannulated and you take a basal sample of ACTH, then you do a CRH stimulation test, 100 microgram IV of CRH is given and again ACTH is withdrawn. Simultaneously, peripheral vein sample is also taken for ACTH. If you see on the samples that there is a high ratio of the petrosal to peripheral. ACTH ratio is high and the basal state without having given uh, CRH if it is more than 2 or 
if after giving CRH it is more than 3 that establishes that the pituitary is the cause of the excess ACTH production, right. If those tests are negative then you do a CT, a high resolution CT of the chest of the abdomen to look for uh, the ectopic source, the tumor that is producing ACTH ectopically. You might even have to do an MRI or a PET scan for localizing a lung carcinoid that is producing, small lung carcinoid that is producing um, ACTH because that might not be visible either on CT or on MRI, right. So, this is how you investigate patients with uh, Cushing's. Treatment is adrenalectomy for these tumors and a transphenoid resection for pituitary tumors and appropriate treatment as deemed uh, correct for the ectopic production of ACTH, right.